All right, guys, so on this episode, we're going to be working on that 8.8 .8 rear differential for my independent rear suspension. All right, guys, what is going on? I am on my way to pick up that differential out of the 8.8 .8 rear end. And what I'm going to do is I've already pulled the cover off and inspected it, but I'm going to take it to Elite Automotive and I'm going to have them do a once over and make sure that the gears are actually okay. Because I am not in any way, shape, or form qualified to know what that's supposed to look like. So here's the deal. What I plan on doing is taking the stock differential. I'm not going to put gears in it. I'm not going to put the pinion in it because I talked to Elite. They looked at it. They said it checks out A-OK. -okay. We thought there might be a chip tooth, there's not. It was just some leftover diff grease. So if you're doing this yourself, if you're looking at it, make sure to check that. If you take pictures of it and have somebody look at it, the diff grease does look like it's a chip tooth. So, with that being said, instead of changing gears and everything, because 355s are gonna be plenty, um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change the diff clutches. Because I'm worried with 100,000 miles on the rear end that it's going to have slip and I want the clutches to be good. So, let's get started. So all right guys, here in the box, we're gonna open it up. I ordered this stuff from Summit Racing. They were able to ship, it to ship this to me in about a day, day and a half. After I placed the order, they are really, really fast. So here we go. Open it up. All right, so we have some Summit Racing stickers, which are good, I like these. I don't really use them for anything, but I like stickers. Um, order form, some of their magazine and order forms. It's a magazine, and now here we go. In here, there are some pieces of metal. So you've got the, the 31 spline S-spring, which it provides the force that is going to be needed in order to activate these clutches. And then with that, down here there are the clutches themselves, which is the carbon fiber clutches, and the uh, metal shims, which are gonna be what the clutches ride on. So it's in a clutch. Here's one of the shims. So, this is gonna be what the clutches actually uh, ride on, and this is gonna be their like flywheel equivalent. I will put the link to this part in the description below. So without further ado, let's go. Before you ever go to install new limited tip clutches, you always have to make sure to soak the clutches in friction modifier. So that's what I'm doing here. Put it in a small Tupperware container and make sure all the clutches get soaked. All right guys, so what we're doing here is I'm gonna take the locking bolt out of the pin um, and we're gonna start rebuilding this differential with new clutches. I've got it rigged with some help so that it'll hold this because it's not in the car so you can't use the transmission to do that. What I've learned here is that it's a 5 16th bolt, not an eight millimeter like I thought it was. The 5 16th works good and I have a semi-long ratcheting wrench that I'm just slowly working that bolt out with. Be careful with it because if you round the head off of the bolt, you're kind of screwed. There's really no good way to take it apart without ruining everything else. Once you have removed the locking bolt, reach behind the differential and push the locking pin out of the differential itself. If it's rubbing against the S-spring, push on the S-spring until it releases and it should slide right out. This is what the differential should look like with no spider gears or S-spring. In order to get the S-spring out, tap it out with a piece of wood and then grab a vice grip and yank it out. Then in order to get the spider gears, hold the ring and pinion to make sure they don't spin and then slowly turn spider gears so that they can come right out. All right guys, so I just removed the whole spider gear assembly from the differential and when you do this, um, make sure that you take the whole clutch assembly apart the way that it came from the factory and spread them out so that you can tell exactly the way that they are stacked so you can restack them the same way. When stacking the limited slip clutches, start from the spider gear and stack outwards. Pay attention to the way that the previous gears were stacked and stack them the same way. From there, it should be thin shim, clutch, shim, shim, clutch, shim, clutch, really thin shim. When reinstalling the spider gears, make sure to install the spider gears that have the clutches on them first and make sure you align the ears on the clutches 
to go in the holes, it'll go in easier. Start with the one that is pushed in towards the ring and pinion, then do the other side. Then in order to get the smaller spider gears, you need to put them opposite each other and then slowly rotate the spider gears the same way you got them out, but this way, push them in and make sure you hold the metal washer on top of the spider gear and make sure it goes in place. All right guys, so this is day two of this differential project. I just got the S-spring and the locating pin and its bolt all put together and torqued down. Uh, the bolt is supposed to be torqued to 25 foot pounds, which I did, I actually had a torque wrench out. Um, and one of the things that I would suggest when doing this is get a set of nine inch uh, vice grips and collapse that spring in a vise and then once you get it in place, start hitting the vice grip with a hammer so that you can just get it started and then get a block of wood that fits right over this S spring and then tap it all the way into place and then make sure that it's located by looking through the pinholes right here. I had to use the, the old S spring, which doesn't matter, it didn't really have any wear on it. Um, I had to use the old S spring because um, I broke the new one. Uh, I put it in a vise and clamped down on it too far because I was trying to get it all the way down and uh, it broke. So I couldn't use that one. But, so just for future reference, if this thing is touching, if that S part is touching this flat part on the vise, stop because it doesn't have anywhere else to go. It's gonna break it right there. That's exactly what it did to mine. So don't, when you get it to that point, just stop. So okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean the whole surface right here of this differential cover. And um, I already did it on, on the differential itself. So when you're doing this, be very careful. This is aluminum and under the Cobra, that's aluminum too. So it's all aluminum, you gotta be really careful. Um, don't mess it up um, and don't screw it up. Like. Be really careful, use one of those plastic scrapers. Those are really good. Um, they're gonna be needed to get all the gasket material off. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a set of, or a, a wire brush, and this one's not super abrasive, it's kind of been used, so it's not nearly as tough. So take this and scrape so you can get all of the gasket material out of that groove so that you can lay a new bead in there with some black RTV sealant. So right, that's what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna install this thing. So all right guys, now that we got the uh, surface of the diff cover all nice and clean. Right there where that groove is, that's where I'm gonna lay the new bead of RTV Black Gasket Maker. So I'm gonna put that on and then really quickly um, go and install it so that this doesn't get hard um, and doesn't form a gasket. So that's what I'm gonna do. Here we go. And there you have it all put back together. When you're installing the new bolts back into the differential, make sure to put anti-seize on them so that they don't gall against the aluminum cover. And then also, all of the bolts need to be torqued down to 25 foot-pounds. 